was there any point in your life which you said to yourself you know what i would trade it all for for my dad to have just been a plumber or something that's a great question i never even thought of that before you know I'm Adam Olson, and for the past 25 years, I've branded and marketed world-renowned athletes, personalities, and brands. Here, we'll share lessons learned and tell stories earned. This is the Double Down Podcast. And welcome back to the Double Down Podcast. Super, super excited for my next guest, uh, AJ Galante. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, he was the former president of of the Danbury Trashers, which is a recent subject of a documentary on Netflix, Crime and Penalties. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, highly recommend it. Uh, he's also the founder of Champs Boxing Gym in Danbury, Connecticut. Uh, and he's also starting up a new project called Ice Wars, which I'm super excited to talk to him about today. And if you're a wrestling fan, you may have seen him on NXT as of late. I don't know how that happened. We're gonna ask him, we're gonna chat with him about it. And additionally, he's a father to be. AJ, <laughs> congratulations on all these amazing things that you got going on. Oh man, thank you, Adam. Thanks for having me, man. No. That's a great intro, man. I, I, I'm, I'm. That's about the story of my life the past eight months. About uh, just a whirlwind of craziness. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it. It sounds like it. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today on the Double Down Podcast. We have so much to talk about today and i can't <laughs> wait to get into it but i would love to start off with kind of how i came to uh become aware of you and your story um i i gotta tell you aj i'm not one of these guys who really sits sits around and netflix bin watches things or whatever but as coincidence would have it um during the holiday break I flew into New York where I'm originally from. As I mentioned to you, I'm originally from Staten Island. I flew in to see the family for the holiday. And at this time, COVID started raging again. It was, uh, you know, it was a, it was peaking again. And my girlfriend's family and my girlfriend and her whole family ended up getting COVID. So I couldn't, I saw oh, them yeah. once. Yeah. So I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't go see them again. It was like a COVID hotspot, you know, it was a super spreader over there. And, <laughs> but I got lucky. I didn't get it. Uh, my mom didn't get it. My brother and uh, my sister-in-law ended up getting it. So I couldn't see anybody. So I was quite literally stuck at my mom's uh, on her couch. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, and <laughs> I, it was just like, what do I do? It was like, I couldn't go see anybody. COVID was weird again. And so I was like, I was literally just stuck at my old house where I grew up uh, in Annadale in Staten Island. So what, what do I do? I, uh, I throw on Netflix, right? What else, what else am I going to do? Right? <laughs> so I, I stumble upon this true crime or, or crime and penalties series on documentary, uh, on, on Netflix. See, I'm, I'm, I'm all screwed up here on Netflix. And, uh, and I got to tell you, I was absolutely enthralled with this story. As I'm watching this story, AJ, I'm going, First and foremost, this guy reminds me of like every friend I had when growing up on Staten Island, right? You, <laughs> right? You, I'm like, I could have been boys with this guy. This is like, <laughs> yeah, because like, because you you grew up, you were into wrestling, you played hockey. Like it was like I was like, oh wow, like we used to have so much. I was a huge wrestling fan growing, up. huge, huge. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I'd I'd be remiss. To, I was one of the biggest Hulkamaniacs growing oh, up. Yeah. Kid. Who who was your guy? Who was your guy? I got to tell you, when I first started watching, I would say Macho Man was my guy. Yeah. And then I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. And then, um, then, you know, as we slowly moved into like the Attitude Era, it was like, you know, like every other kid, Stone Cold, Undertaker. Right. Um, you know, those are my generic favorites. But I also liked a lot of the bad guys, right? Like of Psycho course. Sid. Um, Razor? Razor I liked, but... um. You know, I'm I'm a loyal guy, man. When they defected over to WCW, I, I really wanted nothing to do with them anymore. So, uh, you know, guys like Psycho Sid, uh, even even like Bradshaw. You know what I mean? Like okay. random bad guys. You know what I mean? Um, they just had a uh, Vader. I like. I used to love Vader. Um, you know, this guy was like a thousand pounds doing moonsaults and stuff. But that was so. a WCW guy. Then he went over to WWE. Yeah, WWF Vader. We'll, uh, we'll just put it that way. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's crazy, man. It's like, um, 
you know, growing up, I mean, it was like it was like gang wars, man. It was either you were a WWF guy oh, or yeah. a WCW guy. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, you had to choose your faction. What were oh, you? Yeah. Were you a Nintendo guy or were you a Genesis guy? Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like back then. It was kind of like you know, you, you. It was one side or the other. You know what I mean? There were hard lines drawn in the sand growing up. I yes. remember. I know. I know. It was like I said, Sega and Nintendo. That that was the debate forever. And then it became, yeah. you know, then it became Nintendo or PlayStation or Sony. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, you had to choose your loyalties wisely. But anyway, yeah, getting absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but getting back, getting back to the story. Uh, like I said, I was just so enthralled. I watched this documentary. I got to tell you, AJ, in like utter disbelief, because I'm like. This is like a movie. This is not like real life, right? Like, I, I mean, how many times have you heard that before? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so crazy because, um, you know, it's, it's so funny because when, I, I, when Netflix came in and approached us back in 2018 to do this, oh, and wow. um, they didn't though. even, yeah, they filmed in uh, the summer of 2019. They came to Danbury. And, um, you know, then it came out in 2021 and, you know, it's, it's so crazy. Like the week before the doc came out, I remember starting to get nervous, like, oh God, say, say it's not good. Say it. But I remember saying to my wife, I'm like, I don't think anyone's even going to watch this thing. You know what I mean? Right. Um, you don't know. There's so no, much, I mean, there's it, so much on Netflix. What are the odds that someone's going to stumble it, upon your story? Exactly. Exactly. And I, and I remember when it started to take off. I mean, it was just um, I remember sitting with my mom like a few months ago and be like, Ma, can you believe like how many people like seem to like this story? It's insane to me, you know, right. and uh, I remember her saying like, AJ, this isn't normal. Like this isn't a no like we normalized it, you know, right. growing up. Like, yeah. um, you know, when you when we were in the thick of it, like we normalize it like, oh, a teenager's, you know, running a team type of thing. But it's not normal. So for me, I, I've kind of over the years grown numb to the story and like kind of grown numb to the just the whole situation of the trashers. And um, I'm realizing for millions of people, it's not normal. So it's it's just right. the whole thing has just been um, insane. And, I mean, to this day, there's still people that um, don't believe it's even a true story. I, I have people. <laughs> I've had people, I think the best compliment that's come from the documentary has been um, the two, my two favorite compliments. One I get consistently is I used to, uh, when you first came on the doc, I hated you and I ended up liking you. Right. That was, that's the compliment I get at least once a week from somebody. And then the other, the other compliment, which isn't a compliment, is there's people that think like we're actors, like this was a joke. This right. wasn't a real story. It's, like, a, it's, it's, a, it's a bizarre story. And I want to get into it for the people that haven't seen it. Yeah. I don't want to ruin too much of it. Um, but, you know, we'll, 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 we'll give it the, uh, you know, we'll kind of give it the broad strokes, if you will. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it, you, you, you truly watch this documentary. For anyone who hasn't watched it, you got to go watch it. It is great. It's a great, great story. And for me, at the heart of it, like I said, I identified with this story. I don't know if a lot of people tell you that, but I identified with it because... I, I not only did we grow up liking the same things, I also yeah. grew up playing hockey. Matter yeah. of fact, matter of fact, as a kid, just like you, I broke my collarbone playing hockey. I know wow. you didn't, I don't know if you broke your, I don't know what the injury was, yeah, but yeah. For, for me, it was, I broke my collarbone. The, the yeah. sad part was I played so much hockey that I would, uh, I was, I was a roller hockey guy. Did you play roller yeah. hockey as well? Oh, that's how I started. I mean, I started right. on the street. We didn't, right. Where I'm from, we didn't even have an ice rink until like the early 2000s. So we didn't we, we started, didn't even have pucks. We used to play with electrical tape. That's what we used to play yeah, with. A roll. Balls, pucks, whatever, you know, I mean, uh, we started out on the street, really, you know, that's right. So that's that's how I started. And I loved it. I, you know, I wasn't, it was weird for me because I wasn't like a big, big hockey fan growing up. I, my father had taken me to devil's games and stuff like that. And it was, I loved going to the games. I didn't really track it too much, but I yeah. loved playing and I loved playing with my friends and we would play in schoolyards and meet up with other teams and, and how, how are you going to get home? You skate home. So I would yeah. skate home. And the, the irony of this was I had a hockey game and I was skating home 
from the hockey game and where i grew up there were these hills it was very oh, hilly, yeah. hilly a lot of hills where i grew up which for me was amazing i loved it on roller skates shit, yeah. yeah man just do yeah. 30 down that motherfucker just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just flames coming off the back of my skates absolutely yeah. and i used to literally burn down these hills man i loved it i would slalom and i, I, I was having a lot of fun you know uh, on these hills in the neighborhood but one day the hill got the better of me there was a uh. there was a pebble and I that's all it takes. Yeah, I, I went sailing nose bombed <laughs> right on my uh, I guess my neck or whatever. And I remember being on the floor and there were like two girls in the neighborhood that had seen this fall happen. Yeah, and they came over. They're like, are you OK? And I'm like, <laughs> I tried to get up and I, I'll never forget this sensation. It was like pins and needles like through the back of my neck, oh. through the whole area. I said, all right, something's not right. I should not try to get up. I'm going to just stay here. And I yeah. said, you know, and all of a sudden a woman came out with a, one of those old school cordless phones yeah, <laughs> with, yeah, the yeah, antenna, yeah. with the antenna and called an ambulance and they came and they took me to the hospital. It turned out I had a broken collarbone. What a bitch that was to uh, recover from because you can't ban, you can't put a broken collarbone in a cast. Yeah. You, nah. what, what they do is they um they basically bind your arm to your body with like a like a almost like a bra it goes over your shoulders yeah. and, uh, and they, it just has to recover on its own really mm -hmm. and it and it never it, they always tell you you're gonna have a bump because it doesn't you know they can't reset it yeah. so uh, I have a bump on I it, you know it's it's a it's a, it's a it's a war wound I'm I'm proud yes. of it's not even really a war it was like on the way home from the war but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all it takes is a pebble I mean that's all yeah, it takes exactly yeah it's it's totally crazy so I you know we have hockey in common and um, oddly enough when I was 17 I didn't have a, a career-ending in injury like you had had um, and again we'll get into that but um for me i was i was kicked out of high school right I, okay yeah. i was i was and it wasn't that like i was a bad student or a dumb kid i was just disinterested yes I was bored in school for me it was yeah. just like oh like all right like what are you gonna tell me today that i'm gonna forget tomorrow you yeah. know like what is this like a waste <laughs> yeah. of time so uh so i the day i got my license my driver's license that was like pretty much the last day i went to school you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and, yep. and my and my parents didn't know my parents didn't know and then one day they called my parents they said hey your kid hasn't shown up <laughs> like like uh you know uh what you need to come in and so they yeah. basically told my parents like hey he's either gonna re re repeat his i think it was sophomore year at the time or he's he's uh you know he's he should go take his ged um yeah. i went i went with ged yeah <laughs> and uh the, the the brilliant part of that is i ended up graduating you know quote unquote graduating before all my friends because they yeah. were still in school so hey you know jokes on them hey uh, listen it, uh, life takes us in all different routes you know what i right, mean it's, exactly it's like, you know especially exactly. nowadays it's even it's even crazier i mean every there's no straight line, you know. Everyone has no. A different journey. Everybody has their own journey that they need to follow, and 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 your heart should be your guide. And so, yes. how, and how about this? So, at the time, I wasn't interested in school, but I was so interested in web development, so interested in art and design on the computer. And uh, I had a computer, and I was teaching myself web design. AJ, I'm 17 years old. Yeah, I'm 17. And my father at this time, he says, oh, you got your GED. All your friends are now graduating from high school. What's your plan? Are you going to go to college? What you we got to figure out what's like, what's your life plan now? Yeah. And at the time I didn't realize I was being entrepreneurial because I was too young, but I said, you know what, dad, I'm really into this website stuff. I said, I have an idea. What if we created a local online business directory for Staten Island businesses? Nobody yeah. was doing it yet. Google wasn't around yeah. yet. Yahoo wasn't around yet. Alta Vista, like, like all yeah. actually Yahoo was around. Google wasn't around, but there was no yeah. city search. You know, AOL was really kind of like in its infancy at that time. Yeah. And so I said, let's 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 make a go at this. Like, what do you think about it? Like a like a web design firm here in Staten Island. We'll serve local businesses. We'll create like an online mall for Staten Island. What year was this, Adam? What this year is ninety seven. Ah, uh, what a time! I wish what I would do to go back. <laughs> Yeah, so you were ahead of the curve. You were way ahead of the curve. Yeah. 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 And, and, I mean, it was unbelievable. So here's what changed my life. My dad says, you know what? It's actually a good idea. 
Yeah. It's a good idea. And my father, luckily for me, is a seasoned salesperson. Yeah. And a bit of an entrepreneur himself. Yeah. Uh, so he says, you know what? All right. Load it up. Let's load this up onto a laptop. We're going to take this around and we're going to see if we can sell it. So sure enough, we went to Circuit City that was open at the time and we got a, a floor model laptop. We loaded up the website yeah, and we start taking it around to all these local businesses. And when the, I remember I was just like you and like yeah. watching you in this documentary, you were like, I was petrified. You're 17 years <laughs> yeah. old. So was I. I was not, I was a very shy 17 year old. I was the kid that was, you know, behind his computer. I had a lot of friends. I was like, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Um, but you know, having friends, contemporaries, guys of your age, and then going and speaking to 40 something year old men who have yeah. done this for their entire career is a whole nother story. And then selling them through, that's a scary proposition, especially Very. when you don't know how to sell and you're asking for money, et cetera. Yeah. So my father says, all right, he wakes me up on a, on a, on a Saturday morning. Cause you know, my father worked full time. He says, all right, we're going to go on a, on a Saturday and a weekend, get, get the laptop, get in the car. Let's go early morning. I'm like, Pfft. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? You know, grab the laptop, we get into the car. And believe it or not, one of the first places we stopped into was a, a pool supply store. And while we're in the pool supply store, or before we went to the pool supply, I'm like, Dad, please do not make me go into this place. This is a seasonal pool supply. The guy only makes his money in the in the summer. This guy's yeah. not gonna have money to pay us for a website. Like, please. And I learned the first one of the, the, the most valuable lessons. I've ever learned in my career and it sticks with me to this day, which was never defeat yourself. Yes. Right. Very, that's a good one. Yeah. Right. So he's like, you know, it's like Wayne Gretzky, right? You miss hundred yeah. percent of the shots you don't take. So true. Right. So we go into, we, we he, he's like, no, we're going in, <laughs> you know, my father yeah. walks in, there's dust on the shelves of this place. I'm like, it's like, it, it, it's like a, like an old Western, you know, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. blowing in the doors, you know, the, and, and you just hear nothing but like wind. It was like yeah. desolate. You know, I'm like, this guy's not going to have the money. Like, you know, so <laughs> again, I'm defeating myself before but my father. Hi, I'm Steve Olson. Uh, I'd like to speak to somebody in charge of, uh, uh, marketing or advertising the guy comes out from the back he's got a russian accent and uh yeah. long story short we proceed to my father proceeds to sell the guy and we walk him through the website on the laptop and i'm driving i'm telling him all you know i'm showing him all the the you know the the uh, features of the website it was real basic like a home page direction page coupon yeah. page. real simple because it was on our website at the time so it was like a sub domain kind of situation of course, yeah so the guy go, at the end of it, I'm like, oh my God, this guy's going to tell us to get out. Like, or like, you know what I mean? Like, just yeah, like, yeah. not interested. But to my, to my surprise, the guy goes, okay, how much? And yeah. My father goes, okay, 350 for the first year, introductory rate, blah, blah, blah. Guy goes, okay, you take check. Guy writes out a check on the spot. Dude, we Crazy. went, the first place we ever went into yeah. where I was like, not happening. Yeah. My father 360 that shit. And completely changed the course of my life. Yeah. Completely changed it. And so yeah. when I watch the documentary, I see a father who really cared about his fa his son's future and obviously loved his son to death and would do anything for him. Right? That's yes. what I saw. And that's what I related to because that's what my dad did for me. Yeah. At the same age. At the same Great, age. That's a lucky number. That's a 17 is a lucky number. I tell people. Yeah, right. It's it, so, I mean, obviously the, you know, the, the stories are extremely different, but at the core, the core of the oh, story, yeah. the core of the story is, is that it's a father son relationship yeah. and, and it's a beautiful one. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, you know, it has its downfalls and it has mm -hmm. its pitfalls and so on and so forth. Um, but, to me, it's a beautiful story, and I just appreciate it, uh, how much your father, what, he would go to the ends of the earth for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, he was like, you, I, I would assume your dad's like probably your best friend, right? Oh, yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, we see each other a few times a week, talk daily. I mean, uh, you know, like you said, I mean, you know, it, I've learned, and, you know, so many people have, have approached me or have messaged me just like you said, like, oh man, I related to this, you know, something mm -hmm. with my father or, mm -hmm. and it's just like the lessons you learn. I mean, even though our stories could be so different, like you said, at its roots, a lot of similarities. And, right. um, 
it, it, it's crazy. And um, it, it's, 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 um, you know, super humbling to, you know, hear people, you know, just enjoy the story or what they get out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy. So with that, let's jump into it. Right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, again, you know, a lot of things we're going to discuss is going to be in the documentary and, and you'll see it more in full in full color if you watch it. But I, I want to, I have a couple of questions. Uh, so at, at the age of 10, for your 10th birthday. I know it's coming. Yep. Here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> because you're a huge wrestling fan. Dad goes and gets the, the hot, the, 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 the top of the food chain, uh, WWF superstars <laughs> to come and pay a visit to you and your friends at your 10th birthday party. What would, did you know that was happening? Was that a surprise? So it was 1997. It was, I'm born in August. So August of 1997. August what? And, August what? Uh, 14th. Okay. I'm so, August 2nd. So you're a Leo too. See? There Mark, you go. There it is, dude. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, um, you know, I always seem to have like pool parties when I grew up for my birthday. Me too. You know, Me too. In the backyard, all yeah. nine yards. So, uh, you know, 97, I mean, you know, we're talking at the height of wrestling popularity. You know, right. the late, the mid to late 90s were just insane. Right. Uh, wrestling just ruled everything, really. Um, all my friends, everybody, even the girls, everyone was into wrestling. Right. And uh, it just so happened that an old wrestler, uh, Captain Lou Albano. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. He lived, um, my father was um, actually close with him and his family. And Captain Lou, you know, God rest his soul, he, um, used to live kind of near Danbury. So my dad always knew of him, you know, you know, uh, Captain Lou was still involved with WWF at the time, you know, and uh, it just so happened that the weekend of my birthday party that year, they had like one of those live house shows in New Haven, in New Haven, Connecticut. It's about like 45 minutes, you know, south of Danbury. So it literally fell on the night of my birthday party, you know? So that the night before, I think it was a Friday night. My dad's like, Hey, uh, you know, my dad likes to do stuff like this. Cause you don't, he, he's not a liar, but sometimes you just don't believe him. And he, he likes to like, he, you, you like, like, he's like, well, you know, listen. And at the time, honestly, it was right before they started to really pop. I mean, we had a uh, triple H who was right. Hunter Hearst Helmsley at the time. Yeah. With China. Yeah. Right. Um, the Rock, who was Rocky Maivia at the time. Right. Um, Billy Gunn, Honky Tonk Man, and China. And um, he's like, yeah, we're having him at the party tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, sure. You know, even <laughs> as a young kid, I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> sure enough, maybe like an hour into my birthday party, you know, kids are running. It's hot out. Beautiful right. day. Kids running around, cannonball in the pool, water all over the place, super soakers. All of a sudden, I see Captain Lou Albano, like kind of walk through our back door, like open a little gate. And uh, these behemoths start coming into the <laughs> coming poolside. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, like you just said, an old Western. Right. It was like that. For, like everything went silent. It was right. just like everyone's looking at each other like, why are these guys like in AJ's backyard? Oh, my God. And it was just, um, you know, as a kid you know, idolize wrestlers and wrestling. And, you know, like you said, at the height of it, right? I mean, it was just a memory that uh, my mom even was in on it because she got every kid that was there, uh, just a regular shirt that said WWF on it. And right. every kid got one and the wrestlers were signing it for everyone. And oh my uh, God. tell me, you still I have mean, it. It's, it's somewhere. I know, I know it's somewhere, but my, my really good friend, Mike, actually, when the documentary came out, he, he actually made a small cameo when they're showing the wrestlers at my party. Mm -hmm. uh, he made that his Facebook profile picture, by the way, the, the <laughs> little cameo from Netflix. He's like 10, 11 years old. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, man, you think about the signatures, Triple H, The Rock, China. Yeah. yeah. I mean, crazy. And uh, that was that was it. You know, they hung out for like an hour, two hours. Wow. And um, they were awesome, man. I mean, just great, great guys and girl, China. Uh, just great people. It was they probably uh, it was, ate you. It probably ate out of house and home. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I told the story. <laughs> I, I told that I've told the story before. China, actually. I mean, she had a plate with just burgers stacked on burgers. And um, <laughs> I figured she was bringing it to the other guys. You know what I mean? To share. <laughs> right. And like, you know, you know, you picture Homer Simpson just like <laughs> just eating what like just that's what it was, man. It was um, 
it was uh, it was actually unbelievable watching her eat. It was it was actually like to this day, people that have been to my party, if if like they'll say, like, you remember how China was eating? It was it was nuts. <laughs> That's funny. That reminds me of the stories you hear about, like Andre the Giant. And he, oh. he would go on the road and he would like tell people like they, they would say, hey, Andre, what do you want to drink? And he'd be like, oh, three or four. Right. Yeah. And, like three or four. Like and people be like, oh, yeah, three or four beers. No problem. They'd come over with three or four beers. And he'd be yeah. like, no, three or four cases. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he would drink cases of beer. It's it's so true. And um, but humble guys and girl, you know, just good people. And they, you know, they spend awesome. time. And it's funny because believe it or not, The Rock, who wasn't The Rock at the time, he was probably the most shy out of all of them. He was mm. real reserved because he had only been in wrestling like two years up until that point. Right. He hadn't come into his really? own yet. No, I mean, he wasn't like the movie star that you see in every other commercial now on TV, you know? And yeah. uh, he was having, at that particular time in his career, he was having a hard time getting over. He was booed. It was right before he entered the Nation of Domination with Farouk okay. and all that. That's what changed it for him. Yeah. And then he just took off from there. And that was like literally six months be before like Triple H got with Shawn Michaels and the rest is history. You know, it's, it's crazy to see like yeah. where they went, you know, it's, you know, nuts. It, it's interesting, you know, you hear, I don't, don't want to go, I don't want to get too deep on wrestling, but uh, <laughs> you know, you always hear these guys, they don't want to, they don't want to be the bad guy. Um, yeah. You know, if, when they, when they first debut, but yeah. it's so funny. I've always noticed the guys that debut is the bad guy. They always have an easier time getting over. And then transitioning to a, fa a baby face. It to me, like when I, I mean, I've gone to countless wrestling events. Like when a heel comes out, a bag, you just feel the right. It, you just feel it, you know. And and that's right. why I've always been drawn to the quote unquote bad guy. They just have like um a presence, and uh, I don't know. You're right, man. They just seem to have like more more of a shelf life. You know what I yeah. mean? Than than a good guy. You know so. It, it, it was a it was a crazy time. Yeah, and and not to mention the co the cool thing about being a heel is whether they boo or whether they cheer you, you're, you're doing you're, something right. Yeah, exactly. You right. got two ways. You know, as long as you're getting some sort of reaction, you're doing your job. You right, know? right, right, right. Whereas as a good guy, if you're getting booed, you're that's not good. You know, so right. uh, <laughs> exactly. It's 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 crazy. It's it's really nuts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So moving along. After your tenth birthday, or I can, I don't know what year this was, but there was a a movie that you saw that changed that changed your life, The Mighty yeah. Ducks. Oh yeah, The Mighty Ducks I mean, changed your life. Emilio did that for you. Truly, I don't know if it was Emilio who did it for me. I think it was. Uh, I think it was. I think it was Fulton Reed who did it for me. You know, okay. bad, one half of the Bass Brothers. But uh, no, you know what it was, man. Again, I didn't grow up in a hockey family. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't even know anything about hockey. Um, we didn't even have an ice rink here, you know? Right. And then I just, I'll never forget it, man. It was just like a random, I, what was it? 93, 94. I, I just think, um, it, it was like a, a horrible weekend. It was raining. And I remember my mom saying, Hey, let's just go to the movies. Let's do something. You know what I mean? We're stuck in the house. And, uh, I remember we went and I think the Mighty Ducks, Mighty Ducks one was like the only like PG movie that was like playing. Mm -hmm. So my mom was like, all right, we'll just go see this. Truthfully, I had no, I, I didn't even see commercials for this. I had no idea what, what we it was. Watching. Right. And sure enough, like, I don't know what it was, man, but uh, I was just like, God, I got to play hockey. Like, this is awesome, man. This sport is crazy. And um, like we said in the beginning, I, I, Right when we got out, I was begging my mom, like, I want to go to Sports Authority. I'm like, please, nah. I, I want, you know, we, we, she brings me and, uh, you know, you, we get like a little horrible little street hockey stick. And like you said, I don't know what I'm trying to get. Right. I mean, they barely had hockey stuff at this place even anyway. So right. you just start teaching yourself on the driveway, on the street. And That's um, it. it just builds from there. But um, I, I just became, um, I have a very obsessive personality. So when I get into something, yeah, there's no like slow dive in. It's just, I'm all in, you know, and, um, you know, then, you know, next thing you know, it maybe a few months later, I, I go to a New Jersey devils game. My dad took me, I, I want to say it was like 94. Um, I don't know where he got the tickets, but he got the tickets and mm -hmm. that just became my team. Cause it was the first game I ever, you know, went to, Right. you know, had, had it been another team, I probably would have been a fan of another team, but, um, 
By the way, I got in with I, I got in with the Devils at the right time because we, you know we won three Stanley Cups once I started <laughs> watching and um, yeah that was it man. By the way, my father first hockey game also took me to a Devils game. There you go. It is <laughs> a lot of parallels. We're gonna Insane. have to have like a list by the end of this show. Yes, yes. <laughs> and by the well, way, a I, Devils game. That's a that's a, listen a Devils game being your first game. That's a pretty rare like you know that that's. That's pretty cool. So, well, uh, for me, for me, I grew up super close to New Jersey. Literally, yeah. I always oh, tell yeah. people, yeah. I, I always tell people, I was able to get to the Woodbridge Mall faster than I was able to get to the Staten Island Mall. Yeah, which is, it, it was like yeah. I, I was that close to the Outer Bridge. So we yeah. were we were in Jersey constantly. It was super yeah. super close. I was I'd I could be in Jersey in 10, 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Super Absolutely. Yeah. My brother, my brother lives even closer to the bridge now. If he wanted to be in Jersey, and he could be there in less than five, he's like super. Yeah, close. Yeah. Staten Island's a strange place. Like you're, you're literally, you're, you're sandwiched in between Brooklyn and New Jersey. Yeah, I was there last week. I was in Staten Island last week. Really? At a, were at you a, at, a, at, a, at a baby shower? Yeah, at a restaurant, and yeah, got to go through Jersey. Where I was coming, you know, from Connecticut, it, but we went through Jersey. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you have family out there. No, my best my best friend lives in Brooklyn and him and his wife had a baby shower. And, um, you know, now guys have to go to baby showers, too, now. So I got dragged to it, and, okay. uh, you know, and uh, yeah, it was in um, my my buddy's wife's sister actually lives in Staten Island. So she threw the party it was at a restaurant called Bocce, I think. Oh, yeah, um, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I was out there. like Yeah. Past Jersey, you Shout know, out the, to whole, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, so you 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 get into hockey. You, you you obsess over it. Which, by the way, I completely identify with as well. I go I go hard and deep on things that uh, yeah. I I really get into. My dad's the same way. Yeah. Uh, my, my dad one year decided he wanted to be a, a, a biker. And so he went from not even owning a Harley yes. to, to, to he went and he, he got like a hog, a badass hog. And, yeah. And, yeah. and he went to like some like bike convention or whatever. He got like four tattoos in one day, came home. <laughs> and rang. I'm like, wait a minute, what's happening? So <laughs> Hollywood Hogan, yeah. yeah. Yeah, quite literally, right? <laughs> he went Hollywood Hogan, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I I identify with that as well. I totally got it. Um, so you 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 dive real deep into hockey. Um, and then you end up playing high school hockey for your high school team and yep. you get, you, you get hurt, right? Yeah. My senior year. Um, yeah. I mean, again, you know, I started, uh, playing high school hockey again, Danbury got their rank my sophomore year of, um, high school. So we had to cross into New York state into Brewster, New York to, to play hockey up until Danbury got their own rank. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, play, played high school hockey, you know, just, you know, that was all I was doing was playing hockey. And, uh, yeah, my senior year, just a, a total, absolute fluke injury, kind of like your pebble story. Right. Uh, I, I just, my right skate got, you know, the blade got stuck in a, a tiny little rut in the ice, kind of mm -hmm. immobilized my leg. I mm -hmm. go to move and that was it. Tore my knee up pretty bad. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, that, that was really... um that was the end of my playing career for sure. I mean, uh, wow. you know, it was going to be a crazy recovery. I definitely would have made it, you know, back high school. Um, could I have walked on some college? Maybe, but I wasn't looking to be a pro hockey player. You know, right. like I didn't think I, I was okay, but I wasn't like, you know, a five-star hockey player, you know, but um, it was devastating because we had a good team my senior year and, uh, you know, we, my school had never won States before and stuff. So, you know, it was something we were really trying to accomplish that year. And, but you know how it is when you're a senior, you're a leader, you know, and, and really we were trying to win it all that year. And, uh, you know, the, the team actually, we, we did good regardless, but we, we came up short and, you know, it's tough when you're sitting from the bench watching the whole time. It's just, you know, you're pulling your hair out, wishing, um, right. You know, you could be involved. So, of course. but and that dad, was it. it and dad and dad sees that in you, right? He understands how heartbroken you are because no, you could no longer really play. And if you were going to play, it was going to be a long road to recovery, as sure. as you mentioned. Um, so, dad, unbeknownst to you, goes <laughs> yeah. And, well, and well, this is a, yeah, yeah. This is one of those things where I think he's playing around, and and it's 
like we like the night before saying, you know, the rock triple H are going to be at the backyard. I'm, I'm thinking he's joking. And uh, I remember it was March of 2004. I'll never forget it. It was um, just we're having dinner and he just nonchalantly just decides to say, hey, listen, I think I'm, I'm going to start a um, minor league hockey franchise in Danbury in the fall. Um, I figured, hey, listen, even though you'll be in college, you could, you know, run the team with me and, you know, we'll go from there. And I was just like, okay, dad, sure. <laughs> you know, and um, right. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, I wish there was a funnier origin story or a more in-depth origin story, but that was literally how it started. And I just like, yeah, sure, dad, I'll do it. And again, thinking he's joking around or playing right. around. And, and then like a week later, I'm in school. I walk into school and um, everybody's looking at me kind of weird. And, you know, a teacher came up to me and was like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, you know, about this team. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Right. Just like the team, you know, and I'm like, what team? And he's like, did you see the paper today? And I'm like, no. So I go into the, like the school library, you know, where they got the papers and, you know, the, you know, they got the paper on that big ass wooden stick. You know, right. I, I don't, under, you know, and I'm, I'm looking at the front page and um, it's a picture of my father and it's just, you know, Galanti bringing, you know, professional hockey team to Danbury. And I was just like, and I'm reading as I'm reading, my eyes are just getting wider to the point where <laughs> this I'm, is real. Like, my eyes are burning because they're so wide. And uh, it, it says, and son, AJ Galanti, 17 will be named president GM of the team. And I was just like, you just shit your pants on the spot. Oh, dude. I was like, um, <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, I might as well have just went home. There was no point in me being in school that day because uh, I was just like shot. I was just right. like, so the funny thing about this story was, um, I get home and, uh, my dad would come home seven 30 on the dot every night. Like, like not seven 29, not seven 31, like seven 30 on the dot. The garage is going up. Mm -hmm. And um, he comes in and we're eating dinner and we didn't say a word to each other about it. It was like we were playing chicken with one another. You know, I I didn't bring up pages. Hey, <laughs> he didn't say a word. My mom didn't say a word. My sister didn't say a word. Uh -huh. And it was the most random dinner. It was so quiet because it was like, who's going to say like, who's going to be the one to say something about this? Right. And uh no one said a word. I, I, we, I ended up going to bed that night and I just was like, I was up all night and thinking like, how do I get out of this thing? You know, I can't do this. Oh, like, you were scared. You were really scared. Oh, no, I like that night. Like I wanted to get out of it. I'm like, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I, I don't know what, like, I don't even know the first, like, what's right. the start? Like, where do you even start? Right. But as you know, as the night wore on, I was just like, you know what? My dad always taught me, you know, say what you mean and mean what you say. And even though I thought it was a pretense of a joke, I did agree to be the president of the team if he started one. Uh huh. So I said, you know, I can't, you know, I, I can't go back on my word. So literally the next day we woke up and we just said, all right, let's do it. Let's get to work. And, uh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, un it's unbelievable. Like I said, it, 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 it's 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 quite literally the plot of a movie. A seventeen-year-old yeah. run. I'm I'm sure there are movies that are probably like this, right? Oh, what, what was it? Uh, Rookie of the Year, or like yeah, you know, movies yeah, like yeah. that, right? Um, and so now, I, and I got to be honest, like you, as you watch this documentary, like you begin to get like really impressed by like what you were doing. Like, it's like, wait, like, how, like by osmosis like, overnight, like you said, you become like this, like money ball kind of kid. Right. And like, you're like, all right, we need this kind of guy. We need this kind of guy. And this, what I find really, really funny because like it was, it was equal parts, um, you know, strategy and in, in managing a team as yeah. it was marketing and branding yes yeah it was uh it was you know first of all thank you for the compliment and you know i tell people all the time you know i i really i appreciate you know how many people you know all oh, were so impressed with how you did you know it wasn't just me we had a team and mm -hmm. you know i i never will sit there and act like i did it all by myself you know but you know it's one of those things adam where it's like um you know, you look back and like so many people today will be like, how did you do it? Like, how did you manage to do it or balance? 
the answer is I have no idea. You right. know, sometimes you just, you know, it's like when you hear like, you know, stories of like mothers lifting a car to save their baby. Right, like, right, right, right. You, you don't know how it just when sometimes when you're put in the in the deep end and there's sharks, you figure listen, out how to swim fast. You, you figure, <laughs> listen, and I tell people all the time, like I'm 35 years old now, like I tell people. I have no idea how we did it, how we pulled all this yeah. off. And uh, you just, you just, when you, you realize, you know, when you, your feet are at the fire, you just figure a way, like, you know, like you said, and um, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was important to us. Like, you know, it was important to us, you know, aside from like constructing the team, the way we did, like we, we really did it hand in hand. Like we constructed the team hand in hand with the image. And like you said, branding, we wanted to build like, like, going back to wrestling, a bad guy. Right. So I, we always said like, let's make our team like a bad guy, like a wrestling right. bad guy. Right. That's so smart that people hate so much that they'll pay 20 bucks a ticket on the away games and want to see us lose so bad. And, um, it worked. I mean, look, it, it, it worked. Um, you, you, ever, had to, uh, you ever, you ever read, uh, Sun Tzu's the art of war. No, I haven't. I, you know, that's something I've always tell myself every year I'm going to read and I, I never it's do. It's not, it's not really a book. It's a book of quotes. Okay. Yeah. It's a book of quotes based off of, um, uh, you know, Sun Tzu's theories on war and yeah. what, and, and what you just said about the sharks reminds me of one of the quotes and yeah. uh, I'm probably going to screw it up, but I'll, I'll do my best to, to <laughs> wing it here. He says in the face of certain death, Oh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Place your your army in the face of certain death. Yep. And in a hundred battles, you, they'll never peril. No. Nah, which it's means true. which means like put your ass if when when your ass is to the fire, you're gonna yeah. figure it out because you have no choice. And nah, that's it, it's and that's it's, what you so did. it's it's so true. You know, um, it, my dad is always, and I've realized as I've gotten older, his strategy with me in life is. He always put me in the deep end. Yeah. You know, he'd never let me drown, but he always put, and I used to get mad sometimes with things like, why, yeah. why do I have to do, why right. do I have to do right. this? But, right. but I'm realizing, I'm realizing as I get older, whether he admits it or not, he definitely had a strategy and oh, um, for sure he did. Yeah. And, and you know what? Like you Call said, you, 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 you have yeah. to figure a way out, out of the ocean, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sink or swim. And, uh, you went to the school of hard knocks, brother. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's, it's just, um, it's crazy. You know, uh, I own a boxing gym now and I see like 17, 18 year olds come in and I kind of like think of myself at that age. And I'm like, I cannot believe my dad. Right. Let me do this. You know what I mean? Right, it's like, right, it's, it's right, insane. Right. right. <laughs> now I, I want to ask you about that too, because again, like re relating to working with my father at such a young age, we had some knockdown drag him outs. Like, you know what I mean? Sure. Like I had, I had some, some battles with my dad and, and you know, it's tough working with your dad because the, the reality is your dad is going to talk to you like he's your dad, not a coworker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and the same thing goes for any other family member that works with you. They're going to speak to you like they're your brother or your sister or yeah. your mother or whatever, you know what I mean? It, it's working with family inherently so it is tough it is very 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 tough i tell people all the time i'm like you know everything in life whether it's business anything has its pros and cons but you know it's tough you know especially as as a young kid like like you said i've been by my dad's side i mean i used to go to work with him in the summers at five years old i wouldn't be doing anything i'd just be sitting there at his desk but i was absorbing so much right. you know and um I was raised very old school. I, I always was surrounded predominantly by older guys. So my, me my mentality has always been like very old fashioned, I guess. You know, I, I don't relate to too many, you know, growing up, I didn't really, I had friends. I had a great group of friends, but I didn't have like a thousand friends because I just, not that I thought I was better than anyone because I didn't, but I just thought so much older. Like I, I was just like, um, yeah, I was no more soul. Yeah. I was more comfortable around 50 year olds, you know what I mean? Or 60 year olds even. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's tough. I mean, same thing with my father. I mean, um, again, you know, it's one of those things where 
it, it's not easy and, and um, it, it's, it's extremely hard, but you, you find a way to balance it out, you know, and, um, but it's tough. It, it's, it's, uh, and I think, you know, more than, you know, as much as anyone, it's just a very, unless you've done it, people don't understand just how, how difficult, you know, it can be. Yeah. Cause you know, again, you when, when you're working with your dad and they're trying to teach you yes. the whole time. And at times you'll, you know, later in life, you'll value it. But at that yes. time, it's extremely frustrating. It's well, extremely exactly. Frustrating. And, you know, of course, I, I don't care how humble you are. Right. It, you, you always think, you know, more, you know, oh, like, like, sure. I, right. like I, I've always, I've always prided myself on, on being humble. It's, it's authentic humbleness, but um, you know, when you're young and, I, I just think it's a natural thing when you're put in positions to do pretty big things, you know, you start to get one track minded and think, you know, like, even if you're not doing it in a cocky way, you just think, you know, and right. um, a lot of times you don't and you learn, you know, but um, right. it's tough sometimes getting those lessons from dad rather than right. like a quote unquote real boss. You know what right. I mean? Absolutely. It, it, it's um very difficult and it's got his pros too, but it, it's, um, it's not an easy thing to do for sure. Working with family or even close friends. It's, it's very difficult. Right. So I love, and we're, you know, again, we're talking about marketing and branding here. Now that you did what you did with the team at when your, your first decision was the first guy you're going to bring in, you got to make a splash, right? So who do you, <laughs> yeah. so who do you go get? Well, listen, you know, this, <laughs> it's so funny because uh, Wayne Gretzky, obviously greatest hockey player are, you know, ever, Right. Um, his younger brother was in our league. And, you know, when I started, you know, when we started again, I don't know how his <laughs> name came across the desk. Like, Hey, this guy's available, but we, you know, we are like, we got to get this guy Gretzky. Right, 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 you, know? Right, and, right. Um, you know, I always had a lot of respect for, for Brent Gretzky because he was in a shadow that I uh, mean, yeah, it's tough. No I, doubt I mean, about it, but I, I got to tell you, for the level of league he was in, he was a very good player. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's funny. We, we, we decided to bring him in and um, you know, again, this was really the days before the internet or social media, really when right. it was heavy, we just kind of leaked it to the press that, Hey, you know, Gretzky's going to be at this press conference, you know? Right. right. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Not one person, thought that was weird to just say Gretzky. You know what I mean? Like right. no one was like, if someone's like, Hey, uh, Olsen's coming to the gym tomorrow. I'd be like, who's all Al Olsen. Right, right, like, right. <laughs> we just said, Hey, Gretzky is going to be there. We're signing Gretzky. Right. Now, one person said, is there more than a Gret? Like, why is he saying Gretzky? <laughs> and they all bought it hook, line and sinker. That's and, brilliant. Uh, and and they all came to the press conference. Right. And uh, again, it was on April Fool's Day. So everyone was a little on. Right. Everyone was on right. eggshells to begin with. Everyone's like, is this real? Is this not real? People thought the mayor of Danbury was in on a joke. They all thought it was a joke. Then they're like, Gretzky's going to. It was almost like it's too good to be true. We have to go just because if it's true, we have to be there. And uh, Gretzky was there. Just, you know, wasn't Wayne. <laughs> right, right, right. But But again brilliant marketing like and i don't know who like orchestrated all that but you guys made some really funny uh, not funny <laughs> but like like just intriguing moves and, and now i'm going to go down the, the roster here right because uh one of the next guys you bring on is like this convict <laughs> right like what, what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right like this guy brad wingnut a wing wingfield am i saying that right yes yep <laughs> you, you got you yeah. guys bring him on as what would be the enforcer on the team the guy that's like you don't fuck with my team right yeah you know yeah. Every, every every team has you know the intimidation factor and this guy yeah. was the perfect pick right uh, he was what, what was he locked up for because that wasn't mentioned in the uh in the in the well doc. he uh the year previous i mean he was a minor league hockey like legend i mean one of the toughest and like you said every team had tough guys but there's certain guys that just were on another level and oh he was yeah one of those guys oh, no and, doubt he actually got in trouble for beating up a few um, correctional officers, like off duty at a bar. Oh boy! And, um, <laughs> when we heard that, I'm like, "Oh, that's our guy." I mean, it's like you know, you're picturing like wrestling, right? I'm picturing like a guy in a orange jumpsuit skating in the rink. I mean, um, right? 
he just uh he just fit so perfectly and uh yeah we just you know what it was you know when we would talk to these guys we'd let them know like hey this is what we're trying to build right um they all bought into it even the skilled guys they were like i love it you know this is this is different you know it's um you know, not a lot of teams will like talk with the players about their marketing plans. You know what I mean? They right. don't care. We, they knew everything we were trying to do and, and everyone, you know, and as you know, man, anytime you deal with any team, whether it's a malicious thing or not, there's always that one person wanting to like kind of steer a different direction. Mm-hmm. We got so lucky that everybody from the players to the coaches, to the front office staff, literally everyone everybody was on board. Same- and there was no one pulling in another direction. I've never, those two seasons of the trashers were the only time in life I ever saw that, you know, um, mm. no matter what you do in life, if you're, if you're dealing with multiple people, it's tough. You know, there's always people that, you know, kind of resist a little, pull a different way. Right. The trashers, everybody was like kind of locked in on this is, this is how we're going to do it. It was, um, right. it was nuts, man. I mean, I don't, I wish I, People, I do a lot of podcasts. People are like, "Oh, he says nuts a lot." I don't know how else to describe it. It's, it was just, um, it was, it was nuts. just nutty, nuts, crazy, <laughs> however you want to call it, man. It was uh, wild times. And then you guys find One Eye Willie. Yes, David Beauregard. Yes. What? Like, I, I mean, the the guy was like an unbelievable po- uh, hockey player prior to yes. this injury. The guy goes out. I mean, what a story he has, right? The guy, the, the guy goes down and, you know, is, I guess, out of the league for a, a minute. You guys yeah. decide, you know what? Who cares? He's got one eye. Let's give him a shot. <laughs> yeah. You know listen, what? If he I loses s- the other one, that's his problem. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> so he, believe it or not, you know, believe it or not, like he lost his eye. I want to say it was his left eye. Right? I don't even remember. It's a 50 50 mm. shot. Right. He lost one of his eyes. You know, right. he was actually like, supposed to be like an nhl star like they're like right he was he um he had it all going for him and a fluke accident when he was younger you know playing um he was on a breakaway a guy came from behind tried to hook him right and you know things Went up happened. The shield. it wasn't intentional and, and the, the the shaft came and lost his eye and <sighs> um heartbreaking but i gotta tell you something that guy was an elite goal scorer with one eye and it, unbelievable. It's, it's, he could have a whole documentary on himself. That's like what I'm saying. Story. Yeah, he was, he was, um, and a lot of guys, no matter how good of stats they put up, he put up teams were still like reluctant to deal with them. They're like, Oh, his eye. And right. we're just like, you know what? I don't care how many eyes he got three eyes. As long as he's scoring, you know, it doesn't <laughs> right. matter. You know what I mean? So, right. It was uh he was something else, man. He was he must, um, have, he must have been crying the day he got the call to come play at the, yeah. the Trashers, right? Like, cause yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you, you think your career is over, and then you get a call, yeah. and hey, we want to we want you to come play with us. Yeah, he was um he was special, man. He was um special playmaker. He he could do everything. He was unreal. So moving on with the cast of characters, you guys bring on the Nigerian nightmare again. <laughs> Like every, every, every guy on the roster has his own distinct personality got and, and got unique traits, right? It's unbelievable. You have to, because, you know, one thing I, I, we're in what, 2022 now. I mean, I'm a huge sport fan. I love all sports, but mm. I just feel like sports has gotten so serious now. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like whether it's like, and it's always, look, don't get me wrong. It's always been about the money, but even more than ever, it's, it's all about the money. Um, not just the players, the owners too. I mean, um, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's gotten so crazy. And uh, whether it's political now, everything with sports right. is so nuts. Right. And uh, you know, we were like, listen, we're minor league hockey. Um, we're a very high level league. Okay. This isn't a joke of a league. This is a legit league. But you know what? We're minor league hockey in a blue collar town. We're not going to sit here and, and pretend like we're some sophisticated, like like we're Madison Square Garden over here. You know what I mean? Look, we're going to build our own identity yeah. and um, have fun with it. You know, you know, you got working class people. Listen, look, put it this way. If tickets, let's just pretend that they were like 20 bucks. I, I think they were actually 15, but let's just say 20 bucks. 
if, if someone comes to five games a month, that's a hundred bucks, sure. not including food, parking, Concession, right? that's an expense for someone a month. Oh, so how sure. are you going to, how are you going to persuade a, a person to buy season tickets or, or come to multiple games that become an expense for someone? You, um, hire, you hire AJ Galante, let, <laughs> let him be no, the listen, head of branding you, and marketing. You, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you just gotta, and you know what, man, don't overthink things, you know, just do it. You know, so right. it's like, like Nike, right? Just do it. Like sometimes like, and I'm, Sometimes I overthink things nowadays, but sometimes sure. I tell myself, sometimes I have to tell myself, think like when you were a kid, like, just do it. Who cares? You know, whatever right. happens, happens. Um, you adjust, you put it yeah. out there and then adjust, get yep. some feedback, see how it goes. How, how, could, how, could, you, how could you tweak? Right. You no, could always, you, you could always adjust. And, uh, and it's so true. I've learned more from failure than success. And oh, um, absolutely. And sometimes the best lessons are the most expensive ones, you know? Oh. So sometimes. I've learned that. I mean, I'm sure, you know, maybe you've learned it too. I mean, it's like those, um, it's like a baby, right? Like sometimes you got to let them, you know, uh, you know, you know, you don't want to see them get hurt, but sometimes you got to let, let them, them yeah, bounce off the walls yeah. a little bit, right? Yeah, let them, let them hit the wall. That's how they're going to learn. That's how, you know, it's so true. No, it's absolutely true. Uh, you know, look, the, there's no debating that uh, fa- uh, success is paved in failure. Oh yeah. hundred, hundred percent. I mean, you know what it is too? I've noticed, and I'm sounding like I'm 80 again, but <laughs> I, I noticed like, I'm so glad I didn't grow up in like the social media world that is today mm. because these young kids, I deal with kids every single day and um, they are slaves to the social media stuff. And they think, I tell these kids all the time, stop comparing yourselves. You think like these people are only posting their successes. Like, do you think like, um, you think everybody goes undefeated in life? It's impossible. No, no but nobody. Yeah. But you know what? It's a psychological thing. These kids see this. Oh, this kid's next to this car. He's got a million dollars. He's flashing cash. Mm-hmm. I'm like, first of all, half of this stuff is fake. I said, and if it's not fake, he's only, this person's only posting the good things. You oh, think yeah. they're posting, you think they're going to post the, you know, boxers. Yeah, I deal with boxing. Uh, I'm like, listen, stop, stop comparing yourselves. This guy's not going to post a, a video right. of him getting knocked out and sparring. No. Why would he do that? You know? No. So everyone's, it, it, yeah. Everyone's yeah. social media channel is their purse, their own personal highlight reel. 1 million percent. I tell, I tell these kids all the time. I'm like, listen, stop comparing yourselves. It's uh, you can't it's do tough. It. It, it. It's what they're growing up on. So it's, it's tough to understand. Um, so you have this amazing cast of characters now. Uh, and sure enough, uh, you get on uh, the UHL's uh, radar, uh, the commissioner, uh, you're on his radar, right? He's watching you guys because he's starting to figure out you guys aren't necessarily looking to play by the rules in the UHL, <laughs> right? No, I, I uh, you know, it's so funny. If, if you watch the documentary, I knew it was going to be a good documentary when they they brought he started it all off right like he he kind of um you know went through how he met us and my dad and you know kind of his horror when he met me and <laughs> i mean that was that was so accurate and uh it's so true i i wish i could say they embellished it but it was so true we um we told him we're like hey listen this is what we're going to do and, uh, you know, he was just like, ah, oh, you know, I think he thought we were kidding again. Right. Right. And, um, we just, we just did everything we said we were going to do. We, we did. So night one game one, the puck hasn't even been, been dropped yet. And there's a decision that's been made, which is when that puck drops, the enforcer wing nut. <laughs> is going to drop gloves and just go at it with, with the guy that's directly across from him. What, like, was that like preconceived? Like, 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 Hey, like let's set the tone here. Well, you know, it's something my father and I talked about and, and I got to give him the credit. He was like, you know what? It's great. All these months leading up to the season, we've been prepping, we've been telling people we're going to be the bad boys, the evil right. empire. We're going to do right. this. Right. First of all, we're going to have to walk our walk. But aside from that, 
we wanted to see if it was going to work with our fans. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's one thing to say, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. So my dad, you know, he's like, you know what? Let's just, like you said, rip the Band-Aid off and let's see how this crowd reacts. And we're going to know whether we got lightning in a bottle or we might have to adjust. Yeah. Um, Drop the gloves. It was a bit. It was a good fight. Yeah. And the crowd just, I mean, that's when, like, I think my dad actually, I think my dad actually says in the doc, but that's when, like, the reaction from the crowd, that's when I knew we got it. We got something. We, um, they love it. And yeah. I mean, yeah. they just became bloodthirsty, the fans. They just <laughs> loved it. They loved our style of play. And, and again, you know, this is the other thing I try to tell people. We were just speaking about social media and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's so funny. I see so much on social media. I'm sure you're the same way. I see so many videos that are supposed to be like, organic but you can tell it's fake it's not real right, they're, right, looking, they're right. looking people are, people are looking to go viral i tell people listen none of that stuff was around with the trashers what we did we weren't trying to go viral there was no such thing we were authentically trying to entertain ourselves entertain our fans um you know we weren't in any way trying to go you know trending on twitter you know what i mean so right Everything we did was so authentic. And I think the people felt it. You know what I mean? Even watching this documentary, I've had so many people tell me, like, you guys just feel so real, like authentic. And right. I'm like, well, that's what we are. I mean, we we weren't doing it for clout or anything. We just wanted to entertain our people. We, we even try to entertain ourselves, you know, and right. um, create something so different that... Um, you know, it, it just became like, you know, it, it would the word just spread like wildfire into New right. York, into, you know, during that first year was the NHL lockout. Right. You had Ranger fans, Islander fans, Devil fans, Bruins fans that had no NHL. They would hear about this crazy team. They drive up and they would be hooked. It was right. it was um just, uh, you know, I think the other thing people need to know about success is, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are at something or sometimes you have to be lucky. You know what I mean? Sometimes oh, for you sure luck. I, I got to be honest, especially that first season, a lot of things went our way. Luck wise, you know, the NHL lockout, um, NHL players being available for us, uh, just certain things that the stars were just aligned for us to, um, build something and do something special. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, speaking of authenticity, talk to me about Section 102. (laughs) The best. I mean, uh, you know, it's so funny. The one thing I hate about sports, right? The one thing I love every single sport. I'll watch any sport you put in front of me. The one thing I hate is when teams try to tell you that their fans are their family and you guys are the you guys are the sixth guy on the court for us. They don't. That's so cliche. But I could honestly say Section 102 was literally part of our team. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I mean, like, before games, I would go down there. Right. And we'd have meetings. I'd say, hey, what do you guys want to see? What do you guys, what, what, like, scout for us? What players do you like? Right. You know? Um, You guys heckle guys all day long. Who takes it good? Who doesn't take it good? They literally were part of our team. Right. I'll tell you another story. In the playoffs, um, in the playoffs that first year, we went to uh, we were we played our arch rival Adirondack in the first round, mm-hmm. and uh, they had home ice advantage. So we went up there the first two games. The second game goes into triple overtime. Mm-hmm. Now playoff hockey is on a whole nother level, Absolutely, and uh, yep. it's draining at any level. And going into the second, going into the <laughs> so going into the third overtime. You know, guys were getting IVs. They were dehydrated. They were, you know, guys were, it was a brutal game. And it just, overtime, overtime, overtime. So what happened was, word got out to about 50 Section 102 guys that drove three and a half hours to Adirondack to watch. Word got out that guys were literally sweating through their undershirts. These guys were taking the shirt off their back and sending them to the locker room 
for guys to wear under their jersey. You can't. Now, and let me tell you something. As much as I love them, these guys don't really have the bodies to be sitting there bare naked in the stand. <laughs> but they did it anyway. Right. And I tell you, dude, we ended up winning. How much of that is attributed to dry shirts? I don't know. But if right. it was an advantage that our guys had over Adirondack, it was one. It was just one more advantage. And um, these wow. guys and girls, they literally sacrificed their shirts. You know what I'm saying? And right. um, they were legitimately part of the team. Like when I say legitimately, I mean legitimately. And uh, you you really can't tell the story of the Trashers without them, really. Speaking of uh, tipping the scales in your favor, favor, uh, you also had uh, T Bone on the team. Oh God, uh, yeah, <laughs> your boy T Bone, who was your high school hockey coach, yes. uh, who was just an absolute savage, checking little kids and stuff. And so you got this Good guy. Story. You got this guy on the team as the equipment manager. And he's 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 fucking with the other visiting teams when they're coming in to play with you guys, turning off the hot water, giving them only like a few towels, right? Like, <laughs> oh man, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, it was um, it was mental it, it, warfare. Oh, dude, let me tell you something. Maybe not so much nowadays in 2022, but I think you know, back in those days, mm -hmm. intimidation played a huge role. Mm -hmm. And it's funny going into our second season, our last season, unfortunately, we had signed a few guys for our second season that we actually played against the first season. Mm -hmm. Whenever we signed these guys, they were like, oh, my God, thank God we're on your guys' side. <laughs> like we used to hate coming here. Right. And, and this one and this one player in particular was telling me how and they were in our division when he was an opponent of ours. He told us, listen, whenever we knew we were coming to Danbury. He said guys would fake injuries. They would all of a sudden, like all of a sudden the, their elbow was acting up. They had a concussion. They couldn't play. And they started calling it the Danbury flu because, <laughs> because whenever, whenever a team was coming into Danbury, miraculously, like guys just, just did not because, and, and I, I don't blame them. The minute you like cross like into Danbury, I mean, there's just no matter where you turn, something could go wrong. You know what I mean? Right. There was issues with the hotels. There was incidents at the hotels. There was incidents for team buses getting to the arena, locker room on the ice. Right. By the time you got, by the time the puck dropped, you were done. You were like, I, I don't even want to play. Like I, I had enough. Like we figured if we tortured. I hate to use this word, but if we tortured these guys enough, by the mm -hmm. time the game starts, they're checked out. You know what I mean? And right. um, don't get me wrong. We lost games, but our yeah. record was very good. And um, listen, I don't care what anyone says. That that attributed to um, a lot oh, of the success. You know? Absolutely. And, like uh, I said, mental warfare. It's real. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's, it's real. So fast forwarding to, uh, I guess it's your two, uh, what was it, 2005? That was the last season? Yeah, 05, 06 season. Yep. So the NHL has the lockout. So as you mentioned, so you guys are like the show. You guys are you guys are the only show in town for hockey. And oddly enough, uh, that particular year, uh, the enforcer, uh, Brad, goes down, right? He snaps his yeah. leg in two in like a terrible fashion. Um, Horrible, yeah. But but that particular year, and by the way, I think they tell him and the, the doctors say, hey, look, your career is over. It's a wrap. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah pack it in but he's determined to come back and that year you guys end up making it to the championship game you guys are playing for the cup yeah against the guy that <laughs> snapped his leg yep it's like a movie you couldn't you couldn't script it honestly i mean um i mean you can you know, now it's, it's, <laughs> yeah i guess so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, know it's 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 true, man. It was like, um, and that was his return game. That was the game he came back for. Was that his well, first yeah, game? He eventually, he eventually, I mean, went through a grueling rehab, right? And eventually, he came back, and uh, he did he did play a few games prior to playing this team again, right? But, but not that it, much. But all that mattered to him was getting to play that team again. Yeah, and um, and he gets yeah, his redemption. Yeah, it was a bloodbath. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> it was uh, it was a, a surreal, you know, it was like a very surreal moment. That whole game was just a very odd feel. You know, you walked into the locker room. It was quiet. There was no music. It was no games. It was like right. everyone knew what was going to happen. And um, it was nuts. Right. I mean, look, you guys end up losing the, tit- the title, but, yes. you know, Wingnut gets his redemption. Yeah. Right? Beautiful, yeah. beautiful redemption. Um, uh, matter of fact, I think I think that was the game that uh, your dad ends up fighting with one of the refs, right? Like what, what happened? With allegedly, yeah, allegedly, yeah. right? Allegedly, <laughs> he struck a referee. No one has proof of it, but allegedly it happened. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, he was um, arrested for that unfortunate incident. But uh, like I said, man, it was like. Every every game was an adventure. I mean, you right. could every single game there was some sort of memorable moment where fans are like, "I can't believe I was at that game. This right. happened. That happened. It was um, wild, wild right, stuff." Right. So the season ends. You're looking forward to the next season, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen. There's a blow up. Uh, you know, dad goes down uh, yeah. for you know some things he may have been involved in. And yeah. uh, he, he goes away for, was it eight years he goes away for? Yeah. L- well, listen, if you count, if you count the first few years of house arrest leading up to a trial and all that, I mean, it was close to 10 years. Oh, wow. Was, you know, when it was all said and done. And uh, my dad is convinced that house arrest was worse than prison for him. Is for, that right? Know? He really thinks yeah, that, he, huh? He, he said, I would have rather just gone straight to prison and got those years taken off my sentence. Right. You no, know, cause when you're home, it's an odd thing to be on house arrest because you're home. Right. But you can't go anywhere. And it's right. like the temptation is real, right? Sure, it's right, like right, 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 I right. can just get in the car and go if I really, you know, when you're in jail, you're in jail. I mean, it's not, it's not a movie. You're not going to escape jail. Right? right. I mean, it's just, you can try. It's not going to happen, but right. house arrest was difficult. I mean, right. I think um, to this day, he told me, you know, house arrest was brutal for him, you know, even right. with having family, it was just, uh, it was, it was a tough time, you know, and it was like a double whammy. You know, my, my father unfortunately got indicted, um, you know, June of 2006, you know, Mm -hmm. we have to kind of shut down operations a week after that. So it's like, you know, it it was just a, you, you just, um, you know, it was a double whammy for me, you know, knowing it, it was crushing. And like you said, I mean, um, those two years being part of the trashers, I mean, um, that was all I did day in, right. day in. It's your identity. You know, it, it was everything. Um, you know, we rose like a meteor and then crash like one too. I mean, um, right, right. You know, a, another lesson, like as fast as you go, it, you can, you know, everyone asked me, do you have any regrets? This, the only regret I have from those years where I didn't, I didn't take a step back to really take in. Right. Like, oh, look what we've built. You know, you were moving we, so fast. You couldn't. Exactly. And then, yeah. you know, you, you get lulled into like a, um, a false sense of security. Like, hey, this is always going to be here. You know what I mean? Um, right. This is just what I'm going to do forever. Right. And then next thing you know, you wake up and it's over. And um, yeah. you, you kind of look, you look around like, what happened? You know what I mean? And right. um, it's tough, you know, and, and that's one, that's one of the main lessons I learned was, um you know, try your best to take it one day at a time and, you know, try your best to, you know, take a second to look around and absorb it all because before, right. you know, you just don't know it could be gone tomorrow. Uh, mom and dad still together? Uh, unfortunately not, but every, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's just, you know, it, it's it's a tough thing to overcome sometimes. You know what of course, I mean? Um, of course. It's just been. Uh, By the way, another thing we have in common. <laughs> hey, keep keep tagging it down. Keep tagging it all, man. So, but, uh, you did, know, it, was it's, it, it's just was was mom was mom around for the house arrest? Oh yeah, I mean, my mom was around. Oh, she was. She, she, the she sentence. Was, um, she was know, around. They, for... they, yeah, I mean, they separate. They, they basically separated years after he got released. Maybe that's why so, Dad um, said uh, prison would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> So, um, maybe that's a good point. So, uh, <laughs> but no, man, I mean, uh, you know, just as much as I learned from my, my father, I probably learned just as much from my mother. I mean, my mom, oh, sure, was, uh, of course. 
you know, she, um, you know, she was around through a lot of tough times too, you know, right. and, um, you know, it's just, you know, like you said, it's, it's, um, it's accumulative. I could, I could understand how, how much, yeah. you know, stress that could create in the relationship and, uh, sure. you know, that's, 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 that's a tough thing. And you know what, I'm sure it was equally as, as tough for you and your sister, uh, Very you know, tough, yeah. you know, uh, which brings me to my next question. Was there any point in your life, which you said to yourself, you know what, I would trade it all for, for my dad to have just been a plumber or something. That's a great question. I never even thought of that before. You know, I don't regret anything. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, my father, you know, it, it came from nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, he, 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 uh, you know, I'm sure your father was similar. I mean, I, I think our gener, you know, the generation before guys like us, you know, that generation really had to start from ground zero, you know what I mean? And build from nothing. And, uh, you know, my, my dad, you know, he sacrificed a lot for us, you know, same with my mom. And, um, you know, it's weird. I don't think I was, and I want to be careful how I say this. Cause I don't want to come off. Like I think I'm better or more special. Cause I'm not, of course I'm, well, I'm the most normal guy you will ever meet, but mm -hmm. I don't think I was built to have a quote unquote normal life. Right. Like I, mm -hmm. I just think, um, you know, even now I'm in the boxing industry, 11 years to be involved in boxing. You've got to be a little tweet. Right. So, um, I mean, I just don't think I was put on this earth to have what I guess society would call a normal life. You know what I mean? Right, like right, you know, right, right. I, I grew up, my dad was a nine to five guy and, you know, uh, I, you know, I just, I don't, I just don't think I, I was, um, I couldn't imagine, you know, whether good or bad, I, I've always been around action. There's always been action. Um, mm -hmm. Things are quiet, which it's it's weird because I always um I wish for the quiet. Like I wish, oh man, I just wish I would have a day or two just to sure. And you know, I know you're probably the same way. There's mm -hmm. no such thing as quiet because mm -hmm. you're thinking, what's the next move? What's this? You know, my wife gets mad all the, all the time with me. I hope she's not listening. Mm -hmm. My wife gets mad at me all the time, like, oh, take a day off. Right. Well, first of all, there is no day off because right. mentally, I'm thinking. What do I got to do tomorrow to catch up now? You know what I'm right, saying? So right, right, right. It's weird. The thing that I that I wish for the most, like quiet, calm. If I ever had that, I wouldn't know what to do with it because what? I don't think I, yeah. I, I, I don't think I was built for that type of life. And um, well, it's crazy. It's, it's 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 really crazy. It's hard to explain. But um, no, it's, it's, I completely I completely understand. Look, even when it's quote unquote quiet never in, in, yeah in, in a in a physical sense mentally yeah mentally you're still going 100 well listen Just, i tell people yeah. i tell people all the time i'm like listen for every day i'm not physically first of all we're all physically at work 24 7 now with the phones with everything else mm -hmm. but like you know my headquarters is my boxing gym so mm -hmm. i tell people when i'm physically not there for every day i'm not there it takes me two days to catch up Right. For whatever reason, whenever the, the random, you know, whenever the blue moon is out and I'm for some reason not there, mm -hmm. that's when everything seems to go wrong. And then right. when I get back, I got to just, you know, regroup. It's it's crazy. So speaking, speaking of quiet, after the after the blow up, dad goes away for a while. Um, now you're struck with what what's next for me. Right. And, and whatever it is. It ain't going to be what it was. Right. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, for me, like the fear of like mediocrity yeah. is the worst, right? Like yeah. having like, like, what do you mean? Like you, you went from the president of a, of a minor league hockey team that was on fire to yeah. now you go and work at a heating and oil company. What was that yeah. like for you? Well, wait, where, where were you at? Were you in a, like a really like dark place or oh, yeah i mean you know so <clears throat> when we lost the team you know my my father unfortunately and not just my father people i grew up around you know i wasn't just mm -hmm. losing my father to an indictment it's a lot of people i grew up that i was close with that you know unfortunately was tangled up in it too so yeah you know it's weird that all happened you know going into my junior year of college so my last two years of college were horrible because i just was I guess I was depressed. I would say I was depressed. Right. Um, so many different things going on. And uh, yeah, you know, kind of what I kind of what I said earlier, you know, um, 
you know, growing up in a weird way, um, I grew up like school really didn't mean much to me either because I knew I was just going to work for my dad. You know, I was going to before the trash. I'm like, you know, I'll just I'll take over the garbage business. You know what I mean? I'll right. do this. I'll do that. Right, right. And then it's gone, you know, and, and um, you know, people will say, oh, you had it easy. You always had opportunity. You always knew what you were going to do. Yeah, that that's great. But what happens now when you get lull into a comfort zone? Right. And next thing you know, you wake up. It's gone. The What's my plan? Is- yeah, the carpets is pulled out from underneath you. I didn't have a plan B. I don't I don't know a trade. I don't right. I don't really have a skill. So now it was like, um, you know, you're trying to finish your last two years of college because now I'm like, well, now I have to finish college because I might not I might not have right. I might I gotta get a job now, you you're know. Bu- you're you're building your 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 plan B as you're flying the plane the flying the plane, right? So so <laughs> yeah, so it's like Holy shit! You're 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 waking up. You're you're so confused. And, lost. And, uh, probably lost is a good word. Lost would be the greatest word for it. And uh, right. again, before my father ended up, you know, physically going to you know prison, was right when I got out of college. And um, like he always does, he he um, had a former employee that owned this heating oil company, mm-hmm. and he was able to work a deal. You know, he helped get me a job. I mean, again, knew nothing about oil, heating oil, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was grateful to have something because, again, you know, 2008, you know, that falls when, you know, the market crashed and everything was all crazy. And um, I remember it well. No one had jobs. And Mm -hmm. I I was just lucky to have something. And, um, you know, kind of just humped it. Went, 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 kind of just. (laughs) <laughs> kind of just went with it you know what i mean right. go to work come home right. that's it go to and work, how, how, how how long were you at the heating and oil company for oh almost 10 years almost oh, wow. 10 years but wow. um but i will say you know i would say uh jesus you know three four years into working is is when i like everything else i seem to get involved in by fluke i got involved with boxing right that was when I got involved with boxing. It was kind of like the first time I started feeling like I used to feel with the trashers and um, a lot of action, a lot of this, a lot of that, moving, you know, moving and shaking. And um, right, marketing I these guess, guys brings you back to like the WWE yeah, it, it, kind it of really, feel. Um, you know, like I said, with my obsessive personality, then it's like, all right, let's make a gym now. You know, we we built a gym. You know, 2015, we opened a gym. Um, you know, it's just. Uh, it's crazy. It's everything I get involved in. I never, which I'm sure a lot of people could say that, but everything I get involved with, I never would have thought in a million years I'd be involved in. Right. right so it's right. Like, like, I never like, look, if you want to be a dentist, you go to dental school, you know, if you want to be a lawyer, you go to law school. Me, I just, I was, I've never been prepared for whatever I find myself doing. It's, it's right. insane. And, uh, I guess it works for me, you know. I guess it's saying something about me. I must be a little out there because it, it works sometimes, you know. Yeah. No, it's 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 unbelievable how you've you know, you've navigated this this situation. I mean, it's you know, it's it, it really wasn't a choice in your life, really, yeah. right? It was just kind of like, hey, this is this is the journey I'm on. Let's let's make the best of it. Yeah. And you you've, you know, in a, in a sense I, I almost want to say the the ten years that you worked at that heating and oil, although it may not have been a passion for you, yeah. it was probably one of the greatest things for you. Oh yeah, I, I'm forever grateful that I was. The, those times, you know, it, like you said, I mean, uh, you know, it, it was to put it in boxing terms. If it was a ten round fight, it was kind of like my round off, right? right. I'm not throwing punches. I'm kind of regaining my steam a little bit, and um, right. I'm forever grateful for those years. I learned a lot. You know, again, I really learned a lot on the job too. I mean, I, I've always um, just find myself in situations where you got to learn as you go. And, right. um, you know, it's, it's, a, but I'm very grateful for those years. You know, um, you know, I may not have had the flash of other things I've done in the past or what I do now. Right. But you know what? I, 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 it's funny. I, I some days I miss those days, those simpler days. You oh, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, what, what I was what I was thinking is the reason why it was probably again, you know, I I, I sympathize with the idea of like working with the trashers for two years, and that just must have been like like 
like like a natural high on a daily oh. basis and then you just go with into withdrawals because you're not getting yeah. that adrenaline rush no. like you would at the at, at a hockey game or figuring no. out who what guy you're going to be bringing on next yeah. and you know all this exciting stuff that was happening but what i like about it for you in 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 molding who aj is today is that it was the first time that you although dad made the introduction for you yeah the first time you're working without family yeah and it had it, and it taught you like listen I, i'm i gotta stand on my own feet here like i don't yeah. i'm not working with dad anymore you know what i mean yeah. like it's a very different situation and it made you i'm sure very uncomfortable because it's yeah. something it's something that you weren't used to right well yeah it's it's that security blanket that's not there exactly and, uh, exactly you know it, it's it's uh you you learn a lot about yourself when you right. when, like you said when you when you take yourself out of that yeah. you know, security zone yeah. and um yeah you're it was, you're a thousand percent right it was its own challenge and you rose to it and you wrote yeah. and now and now you've, you've risen through the ashes and that yeah. and that and that that uh that person that you are naturally has come back to the surface again and now you say i want to open a boxing gym right so you open this yeah. boxing gym you're bringing you're seeing all this talent come and go and you're i guess i don't i don't know the ins and outs of the business but are you representing some of these guys is, how does that yeah, work i mean I, I i basically without even trying mm -hmm. you know i found myself in like a role where i was managing a fighter unbelievable and, uh, you're like don king now <laughs> oh man it, it, it's only in america is, baby only in america yeah, <laughs> bo bo boxing is a is a strange world and you got to be a little off to be involved in it and mm -hmm. uh i've been doing it 11 years now and there, there's so many different facets of the of the sport and um you know again i didn't grow up a boxing fan i mean other than mike tyson i knew nothing about boxing oh huge mike um, tyson fan and, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where, again, kind of a, a new challenge. And you know, a lot of people, when I first got involved, they thought I was crazy. Like, what are you doing? You know, and, um, right. you know, you, you, you find a way, again, the deep end, you find a way to make things work. And, um, you know, that's all you could do. You know, your, it's, your, it's your passion brought you there. And, yeah. And, and, and I you're mean, flourishing um, because of it. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things where um, I, I don't know. I don't even, you know, I used to think oh, I just seem to be attracted to sports, which I, I am. But I don't know. I, I think I'm more like I just like the challenge sometimes, you know, like, like, you know, don't give me any prep. Just pick me up, drop me somewhere mm -hmm. and let me see what I could do with it. You know what Absolutely. I mean? And uh, that's what I just always you know, at 35 now, I mean, enough time's gone by. I mean, enough, uh, I just have patterns and that's always seems to where I find myself in those uh, yeah. uncharted territories. And so now, uh, more recently, you're, you're kind of marrying <laughs> yeah. the two things, right? You're marrying yeah. ice hockey with combat sports. And now you've created something called ice wars. T talk me uh, through that. Well, yeah, I just decided at this point, let's take everything and just put it in a pot and see what the hell could come from this now. Okay. And it's funny, last week I was sitting there up all night doing some work for this and I was just thinking like, what am I doing? Why, why am I, why, AJ, right. why? You know, we all ask ourselves um, these questions. I don't know. So listen, the Trashers was a mix between some of my loves, wrestling, hockey, we created the Trashers. This, you know, uh, this is basically trashers, wrestling, boxing, right. all in one, all right. in one big, like, 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 pot. long story short, there was um, actually 2006, there was a promotional group out of Canada that did a, a one night tournament called Battle of the Hockey Enforcers. Okay. Basically, it was a mix of, you know, I think it was like 10 to 12 of some of the toughest hockey fighters at the time. Right. And a one day tournament. And, um, you know, the winner won a big cash prize, the whole nine yards. I remember hearing about this actually in the trashers locker room because a couple of the tough guys were like, yeah, I, I may do this. It's in the off season. I can make a few bucks, blah, blah, blah. We end up losing a team. My dad gets indicted. I lose track. I don't right. know if this even happens or not. Right. Flash forward 15 years later, never did an event since. 
um, one of the founders reached out to a mutual friend and they saw the Trashers documentary and they're like, we have to, you know, we want to get involved with, you know, AJ and his dad, you know, and uh-huh. uh, met with the gentleman. Great guy. I get pitched ideas daily. Sure. But, but every once in a blue moon, someone pitches me an idea where I get that trasher feeling where I'm like, oh, God, this could be this could be something. Right. And uh, one time it was boxing and, and now it's been this. And uh, the guy told me the whole thing. And uh, I'm like, he, he gave me full creative, basically. He's like, oh, look, wow. you take it, you run with it. I, I named it Ice Wars, you know, uh, and basically it is prize fighting on ice. OK, it's a, it's a new it's it's literally a brand new combat sport. Right. We actually have regulations. We had to get it regulated. Um, it's so much work. It's like another full time job. I haven't made a penny doing, but right. it's it's something that is I really believe and I'm biased, uh-huh. but I really believe this could become something insane. So- honestly. So talk me through how this is going to work. Guys come out in their full hockey gear. So gloves, helmet or no helmet. So, we're, so, so we're, so these are all hockey players. Right. Um, it's funny. Some of them that are in our first event in May are guys I that were rookies in 2004, five, six. And I remember hearing their names through the hockey world. Right. They're veterans. Now they're mid to late thirties. We got uh-huh. some young kids, tough kids. We're going to have, um, Basically, they're in full hockey gear from helmet to skates. Right. They wear they wear um, four ounce MMA style gloves. They're going to wear gloves. OK, yeah. M- MMA style like you see in the UFC and stuff. Right. And, um, so there is an extra. It's not bare knuckle. There is an extra layer of protection. That's, yeah. OK. I was interested to um, hear that. And it's full hockey gear. Um, no stick, obviously. Unfortunately, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> um, right. But uh, listen, each fight is two one-minute rounds. So there, I was, I was going to ask that question too. There are rounds. Yep, two one-minute rounds. Well, a minute break in between. Okay. And uh, basically, like boxing, you know, the fight could be stopped by the ref. Um, there could be knockouts, and it or it's a um, you know, a, a judging decision. You know right. what I mean? And. Uh, it's going to be wild, man. I mean, we Sounds got some, like it. And, and I'm looking for characters, man. And I told these guys, listen, this is a real sport. It's very real. This isn't fake. This is real fighting. But I told these guys, listen, I want to develop characters. This is entertainment. Right. right, right. Um, I'm not looking to create some pristine sport. We're looking to create fun entertainment. And right. um, man, we got some characters and uh, some big boys and we're going to have a heavyweight tournament. Um, so, so the tagline is who will be crowned King of the rink with a K. Right. So, so, so it's the King of the rink heavyweight tournament. It's a one day tournament, one night. Is it a full, 20- is it a full hockey? You don't need it. You don't need a full hockey rink, right? You could, you could no, make it smaller. No. you just need a, we just have a small surface area. Okay. And, uh, it's all action, man. I mean, it's not like a 10 round boxing fight where there's lulls in the action. I mean, it's right. and soccer, man. And, uh, you know, it, it's so crazy because, um, you know, when I first started with the Trashers in 04, I was a teenager. No one wanted to give me the time of day and no one knew who I was. Now I approach hockey players. They know who I am. They're right. all for it. You know, they're like, yeah, let's do it. I want to I want to work with you. It's been easy to recruit guys. It was, sure. it's, been, it's been easier than I thought. And um, it's going to be wild, man. Are we're they- stream- we have a streaming service. It's streaming globally. Oh, my goodness. Um, are they gonna? Bucks. Are they gonna wear helmets or no? Yeah, you wear helmets. Right. Um, you can't intentionally take the guy's helmet off, but if you land the right punch and the helmet falls off, you shit out of luck. You know what I mean? Um, right. So it'll be a it'll be a, a helmet that covers the head, but not the face. No, no, no. Just a just a regular helmet, no visor. Right. And um, you know, it, it, it's it's going to be um. It's such a brand new thing that with, for sponsors, we don't even have photos, videos to show people. Right. This is literally like me talking to you is all I can offer right now. It is such a brand new thing. <laughs> when is that, the fir- when is the first event? So May 21st. Up oh, in, my um, God. It's coming up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've been uh, this has been going on for months prepping this. It's going to be up in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Oh, my goodness. Um, River Creek Casino. It's going to be unreal. We got a nice small. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll take a trip up to Canada. You, you know, you know a guy who could hook me up with some tickets. Hey, listen, man, <laughs> you won't regret it because if this 
Listen, I have a feeling this is going to turn into something where years down the line, people are going to be like, oh, I went to the first ever Ice Wars. Oh, you know my what goodness. I mean? Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, are you guys it's, selling tickets? Yeah, we, we literally yesterday went live on Ticketmaster. Oh, my so, goodness. Uh, we got four, like 1,400 seats. Uh, we didn't okay. want something crazy big. Right. Small, intimate, very trasher esque. Right. And, uh, streaming live on Fight, uh, F I T E. It's 20 bucks. Right. Um, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be different. It's going to be, um, it's going to be something else. And uh, hoping in a perfect world, we'll be able to get one more in maybe in mid to late August before the real hockey season starts. Right. Um, and then we'll, we'll shut down until 2023. And then our season would typically be mid April to the end of August. So in a perfect world, three, four shows a year, you know, you don't oversaturate. people. I agree. With yeah. And, and uh, it becomes an event kind of WrestleMania, you know, right, right, you know, right. Ice Wars two, three, four, five. So, um, it, it, it's going to be fun, man. And, and I tell you, I got a lot of boxers that are trying to learn how to skate because they're like, wow, <laughs> this is, you know, cool, it's man. so funny. I was going to say that to you. Why don't you just teach a boxer how to skate? Right. Listen, I, I do plan on, I do plan on instituting in the second one, a combat sport division, mm -hmm. because I was shocked how many people, MMA fighters, boxers mm -hmm. who, who've given me proof that they used to play in high school or college. Mm -hmm. They can legitimately skate. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? We'll put a combat sport division together. And um, you know what? You may have a boxer versus a, a another, MMA guy on skates. Another great question. Weight class or no? Two weight classes, 200 and up and 199 and down. That's it. <laughs> oh, wow. Two. Okay. Listen, the way I look at it is I've never seen a hockey player at a face off. Look at a guy and say, hey, how much do you weigh? Oh, I weigh this. Oh, I weigh that. Listen. All right. You know All, right. It, it's, All right. It's, it's, and you know what? It, it's funny. Um. And, and, and you know what? Like, like the winner's getting a crown, king of the rink. Like, Got like it. usually you get belts. Right. I want. I was like, listen, our king needs a crown. So I love it. Like, I was like, look, if I was younger and saw that, I'd want to fight for a crown. That that's like some serious bragging right. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So we might we might need to do some ice wars pillows one day. You never abso know. Absolutely, and and I, that, that's a perfect segue uh, to how we met. I, I I should have brought this up at the top of the show, but. Shout out to our boy Alan over at oh, Chalkline. Uh, Alon, uh, Chalkline is just a really, really cool company. If you have the chance, check out chalk-line.com. Uh, they have licensing for the WWE and uh, Pac-Man and Capcom and uh, just all these really cool crazy, licenses. Crazy vintage stuff. Yeah. yeah obviously, Trashers. Uh, they make jer Trashers jerseys, etc. And uh, they do a great job with their apparel. Really fun, super loud, uh, all yeah. over sublimated printed uh, garments uh, that uh, retro fans would love. And uh, even even modern day fans, because they have stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, I know it's retro, but yeah. They, they, they do a lot of amazing things. So I was lucky enough to connect with Alon through uh, uh, Nolan, who's one of the artists uh, on our team. And uh, no, uh, and Alon has just been absolutely tremendous to us. And uh, we always have great conversations. Today, we had another hour uh, call today. I think we're always on the phone, me and Alon, just swapping stories and you know, he's, help, he's helping each other. Guy. But yeah, while, while, while I was on the phone with him one night, he said, you know what? I got to introduce you to AJ. He's like, I don't know why, but I know you and AJ are going to get along. He's like, he's like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, I love AJ. He's, he's salt of the earth. He's like, he's like, did you see the trashers documentary? I was like, did I see the trashers documentary? <laughs> like, I literally yeah. just watched it. Like it was like, you know, like a, a couple yeah. of months ago, whatever it was. And he's like, I'm going to introduce you to, to, uh, to AJ. You guys got to get together. We had a conversation. I, I, I let you know about big league pillows. Yes. which is a brand that we founded and, you know, created all the assets for the, you know, and we put it out there to the world and, and we're lucky enough that big league pillows is doing some really great things. And oddly enough, when I was watching the, the doc, I was going, how cool would it be if we made treasures, big league <laughs> pillows and, you know, put it out there into the world, like with just kind of like brainwaves and in less than a year we get connected and yeah. I, and I'm like, hey AJ, I got this. I got this big league pillow thing. Let me send you some samples. I send you a couple of samples, and your response was, 
Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> listen, again, I get especially with trasher stuff the past eight months, I have so much stuff in my office, people, which I'm very grateful for. People try to pitch me things all the time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm one of those guys that likes to throw as much shit on the wall as possible. I'll put it. Listen, if you want to make trasher diapers, let's do it. I don't care. <laughs> but the pillows and listen, I hate to move the phone, but <laughs> it's all right. Even moving see, the phone, the whole, we, as, the whole podcast, see, you know, <laughs> there it is. There see, it is. I mean, just, Show them the front. Show them the front. Let's see if you could. Could you pull the front yeah, out? Yeah, unreal. Like these things are are, uh, and this is the smaller one too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is the blue one. There it is. <laughs> and then uh, you got Dominic yeah, on the back. Yeah. Who's Dominic? No, that's my. Uh, well, I want to move him to golf. Hopefully, when he's older. But uh, that's my future <laughs> son, and uh, hopefully, he'll take on something a little less dramatic. But uh, hey, yeah, listen. That's not- he could, he could be like a happy Gilmore, wear a hockey jersey while he plays well, golf. That's, hey, you know what? Now you're thinking like a promoter. That's a good idea. <laughs> but no, I mean, um, you know, listen, you know, it's it's one thing to see things on the website or mm-hmm. social media. But yeah, when these came in, I mean, they're, 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 they're unreal. So I was so happy we, we hooked up and, um, you know, I, I uh, yeah, actually I got an extra. I have one extra that you sent me that I think I'm going to do a, a promo giveaway. Cause people, people have been loving them. The few people that I've talked to Absolutely. at the gym. And uh, I think, uh, I think especially around Christmas time, we're going to have some pretty, big, I think you're going to, I told you big ones going, I told you whatever, whatever you want to do, you want whatever promotions you want to do. You let me know. We'll, we'll be more than happy to support it. it, it it's, it's a really cool thing for me personally. I mean, obviously yeah. you, you and I have struck up a really nice relationship and yeah. uh, it's just been an honor to work with you and collaborate with you on oh, the course, on, man. on the big league pillows. The nah, trash was big is, league I mean, pillows. Even the pack, I mean, even the packaging, the locker, and the the draft letter. I mean, it's sick, man. And uh, thank you, brother. Yeah, I mean, the jumbo ones are cool. Um, mm-hmm. you know, my wife hogs it now upstairs, <laughs> so she has it. But uh, no, nah, man, these these pillows are they're um they're awesome, man. I mean. The detail is crazy, too, because that's the other thing. I mean, the, right. the detail on the jersey. I mean, I just sent you a couple of vague pictures and they just you guys crushed it. So, yeah, you know, I, I really I really appreciate Alon hooking us up. And uh, of course, who knows? Hopefully Ice Wars gets big enough one day. We'll have to do some Ice Wars pillows. That'd there you funny. go. There you go. And and as far as far as, uh, you know, the details, right? God is in the details, right? As a as, yeah. a, as a marketer, brander yourself, oh, yeah. you know, that's that's something that's very important to me. Um, but I want to, I want to bring this back full circle now because we started this conversation off with wrestling Yes. and now I'm flipping (laughs) through, I'm flipping through my uh, Instagram and I follow the WWE and all of a sudden I see you walk out from behind a curtain uh, (laughs) of NXT as, uh, Tony D'Angelo. Am I saying that guy's name, right? What's his name? Yeah. Yeah. As Tony Tony D'Angelo's valet, you're his, like almost his manager. How how the hell did this happen? I still don't have any idea how it happened. I mean, (laughs) again, I'm just living in a simulation right now. I have no idea why or how these things are happening, but I will say, wrestling was my first love like real of course, love. yeah like any other kid our age right and again whether people believe me or not i always liked like the bad guys i i always wanted to be a wrestler i thought i'd be a wrestler one day right. but i really ended up liking the managers right 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 i, I like the shit talkers i like the guys that were well you know wound people up jim Cornette, paul Heyman. um I used to study those guys legitimately. I'd be like, wow. And honestly, again, Bobby the brain, Bobby, the brain's the best. Yeah. He, um, I mean, those are some of the best. I mean, and again, whether people believe it or not, sometimes I think people think I say things because it sounds cool on podcasts, but I legitimately like when they, like when the trashers happened, I knew I was going to get a lot of heat from people because I was 17. I knew people like, Oh, he's a spoiled kid. He's this, he's that. I knew I was going to get a lot of shit from people. Right. So I said to myself, listen, if I'm going to get flack from people, regardless, I'm going to amplify myself. Right. And I would be up in the skybox talking trash to the other team, to the right. fans, to this. And I was like a character in a way. I mean, it was really me, but I, I amplified it. So right. 
taking it back to what you how you brought this whole thing up, you know, uh, I struck up a relationship with um, WWE a few months back. Um, oh, wow. And, uh, you know, they they kind of like that. You know, they know I'm a wrestling fan, you know, right. especially when the doc was really hot in the way beginning. It was trending. It was this. It was that, you know, they invited me out to Smackdown in Hartford. And um, listen, I, I think when they met me, they realized how much of a fan I was like I was taking. I felt like a little kid, you know, and I, I enjoyed it. And uh, right. basically, long story short, a few weeks ago, they invited me out to WrestleMania in Dallas. Right, right bucket list thing i'd never been to wrestlemania so Which, by like, the way but while you were there you ran into my good friend ryan Taka. shout yes, out to ryan, ryan Taka. at a cocktail hour <laughs> at, a, at a wwe cocktail hour at wrestlemania i'm like where am i you know what i mean <laughs> so that's another funny story but um so they invite me to wrestlemania and i'm mm. like they, hey we got two tickets i bring my best friend um who i was in staten island with last week <laughs> we go down you know the week of WrestleMania, so we're getting ready to go. I'm thinking I'm going Saturday, Sunday. They're like, hey, listen, since you're going to be down here anyway, um, you know, do you know NXT? I'm like, yeah, I know NXT. And they're like, yeah, it's our farm system. Basically, they're like, look, we got a character. Look him up. And I knew who he was. I'm a fan. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I think that kid, you know, he's a good talker. They're like, do you want to walk him out to the ring? And I'm like, oh, yeah. I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. So, um, I get involved. I'm backstage. I'm talking to Shawn Michaels. I'm like, what is going on? Wow. You know, I mean, just craziness. So I walk him to the ring. Uh, he ends up winning. We celebrate. I'm talking trash to the fans on the way out because he's a bad guy. Right. And um, that was it. My work was done. Go to WrestleMania Saturday. I get invited to a cocktail hour at WrestleMania. Right. I meet your buddy. He comes up to me and he's uh my buddy was wearing a trasher jersey and he noticed it. Right. Then he put two and two together. He, he, I guess he knew who I was. And then he brings you up. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> Apple, I mean, like you know, and uh, I mean, uh, and then the next day, you know, at SummerSlam, on, I'm SummerSlam at WrestleMania on the Sunday night, the guy from NXT calls me. He's like, hey, can we fly you to Orlando on Tuesday? You got to be kidding me. Back. They give me a full promo. I'm right. like freaking out on the mic. It was Right. I don't know what's. I don't know if anything comes of it, but I told them I'll drop anything for them. But I, uh, whatever I, they, yeah, I, I saw, I saw that. Like you were like doing like a, you're like your, uh, you were uh, what was it? You were uh, yeah, uh, we were making, initiating, initiating it was Don, right, right. And and, it was, it was crazy because, dude, you know, all joking aside, I'm a big wrestling fan. Right. I used to do backyard wrestling. It's all, you know, right, right. But I'm not a trained wrestler. I'm not a trained promo guy. Right. And they of course. gave me like a six minute promo on the yeah. mic on live audience. I was freaking out. Right. Uh, it was it was an experience. I'll never but you forget. did great. You did great. You improvised on your feet because they were they, 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 the, the crowd was razzing you. So, so you turned around. Shut up. Yeah, was, shut like, up. <laughs> so I, I lost my line. So I, I, at one point I lost my line and I'm looking at Tony D'Angelo and I'm like, right. and he knows he's got his head down and he knows I'm lost. So I'm like, I got to buy like 10 seconds. So I tell right. them, I'm like, shut up, shut up. And they're right, like, right. Me, me. And, uh, <laughs> look, we piecemeal through it. I mean, um, I don't think it's going to make WWE Hall of Fame uh, <laughs> promos, but we piece through it. And it was like, a. I mean, I never, dude, I would have never thought I'd ever. This is so something. cool. I mean, it's just and, so and cool. I'm just, and I'm having fun with it, man. I don't take myself too serious or, you know, listen, if the opportunity comes, you, you, you know, like you said, man, I'm, I'm having fun with it. And uh, man, it was a crazy experience. I mean, just to go to WrestleMania alone was a blessing for me. It's it's a bucket list thing. And yeah, get involved with a storyline. It was just crazy, man. <laughs> so I think what, one of the last times I spoke to you, I, I, I was asking you, are there any plans to turn the trashers into a movie? And you were like, well, I don't know. Like it's a, yeah, it's, yeah. people are talking about it. We'll, we'll see what happens. So here I'm going to pitch you. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to pitch you my perfect trashers movie. I let's, if I was the producer and by the way, yeah. if the opportunity ever happens to produce this movie, I, yeah. I would be fucking all in. I would be all in. You <laughs> yeah. just call me and say, Adam, we got the green light. Let's go. Let's make this movie. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I got the writers. I'll get the. You tell me. You come yeah, and tell. Yeah. You come to me. We'll make this movie happen. 
<laughs> and here's who we're gonna cast, okay? Here, uh -huh. here's, here's my perfect trashers movie. You ready? Yeah. All right. Your dad, Jimmy Galanti, is gonna be played by Mark Wahlberg. Ah, uh, but yeah, everyone says that. Right. Everybody, Ma everybody says Mark that. Mark Wahlberg's gonna play your dad. He's the perfect. He's the perfect combination of tough guy, but yeah. could still be funny. Yes. Yeah. Right. He has he has the the, the perfect combination sour and sweet. Yeah, he's the yeah. he's he's the guy. He's the guy. He's an East Coast guy. Perfect. Ready? Yeah. All right. T Bone. T Bone's gonna be played by Vin Diesel. That's a good one. I never even thought of that. That that's that's a good one. Vin Diesel's gonna play T Bone. Okay. Yeah. And he's gonna uh, cry. He's the perfect T Bone. We put yeah, some we put know? some big glasses on him with a cigar in his mouth. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's perfect. That's a really good cast right there. That's I'm a good telling cast you, right I'm not. I'm not done. You ready? I'm gonna keep blowing <laughs> you away. Here we go. Richard Brosell, who is the commissioner, yes, of the uh, UHL, right? Yeah. I got the perfect guy. You ready? I'm ready. Jason Alexander is gonna play Richard Brosell of Seinfeld fame. Hey, you don't understand. Seinfeld is my favorite show of all time. As a matter of fact, I <laughs> take another thing there we have go. in common. <laughs> I'm telling you, I pride myself on Seinfeld trivia. I I'm not a thousand percent, but I'm good. If George Costanza played in our movie, I'd be the happy. There wouldn't be much <laughs> left I have to do in life. But here's the thing. What's perfect. great. But he's perfect. the perfect cast. You, you got to get him. Honestly, it, he's Jason Alexander is the first guy you go after. Because once you get him, they all they all fall into it. And, and he's the heart and soul, right? Because he's the guy who flips. In the beginning, yeah. he's the he's the guy that's really, really on you guys. And then yeah. at the end, he loves you guys for what you did for the UHL, right? Yeah. It's, it's the perfect cast. Uh, what a per that that is that is really good. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now there's a couple of FBI agents in the movie, but yeah, I want the lead FBI agent to be played by None other than, get this, hold on to your seats. We're going to bring it full circle for you. We're going to make all the dreams come true. Emilio Estevez. Wow. Oh, my God. He, listen, man, do you do this for real? Are you a pastor? I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you, AJ, when you're ready to make this movie, you give me a call. I'm going to make uh, this I'm going to make this cast a reality, okay? If that's this is not the movie. an FBI agent, I don't know. That is perfect. He's a little older now. He'll be the yep. perfect seasoned FBI agent. Okay. Oh man, that is that is that is honestly the 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 Jason Alexander, and I refuse to call him that. The George Costanza <laughs> thing is perfect. Don't don't say that. He won't <laughs> he'll, he won't be in our movie, dude. Don't insult him. <laughs> no, George is. I, I dare say George Costanza may be the greatest. The greatest character of all time. I don't care what anybody says. George Costanza <laughs> is the he's, best. He's he's great. He's he's one of my favorite actors of all time. I yes. love Jason Alexander. Now I agree. I you know here's the thing, and I think we could fill out the cast like the players with a lot of you know new faces, fresh faces because yeah. we just we loaded up. You got Mark Wahlberg, Vin Diesel, Jason Alexander. That's a big budget. That's That's a big a, budget. No, I, you know what? I think you know Mark will probably come in at the highest right but everybody else because mark's yeah. attached or whatever maybe we could get some deals uh yeah. you know whatever you know maybe jason alexander you get because he's going to be a centerpiece of the movie um and you know to play you now i gotta add i'm gonna turn it back on you who's gonna play you well that's the thing is you're talking about a 17 year old me too right right you know all right now try to try to have an open mind to this and i thought about this now, you got to understand a few things. Number one, it doesn't necessarily have to be a 17-year-old. It could be someone who's a little older that looks young, okay? Mm -hmm. You got to picture me. You know, got to give them a fade and edge up, you know, right. change. <laughs> right, right. You also need someone that was a little polarizing that people just couldn't stand at the time. <laughs> right. Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, wow. That's an interesting poll. That's an he's, interesting he's, he, he may be a little too old now, but it, yeah. you could make him young. And I'm telling you, people, he's very polarizing. He likes yeah, yeah, hockey. Yeah. You either love him or you hate him. 
he, he's got that little candy ass shit grin that I used to have. <laughs> and I'm telling you, but other than that, I don't know any real young act. I mean, I don't know. Right. I don't we're going to have to, we're going to have to dye his hair. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, but other than that, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a big movie buff, so I don't know who the young actors are. Right. They might have to be an obscure kid, you know, right. like kid that no right. one knows, you know? Right. So, uh, right. We'll have to, we'll have to go. We'll have to do a casting. We'll have to find a, an yeah. unknown. We'll have to find an unknown, but look, you got, you got an amazing cast. And when you're ready yeah. to make the movie, like I said, you call me, <laughs> get on the phone. So you tell you, talk to your dad tonight. Say, listen, I spoke to Adam on the podcast. We had a great conversation. He's got the movie all planned out. Well, I'll tell cast. you, he, he, he loves Mark Wahlberg, so that would work. Okay. Um, the Vin Diesel thing is perfect. I never even thought of that. Uh, <laughs> but Jason Alexander, I mean, like, <laughs> that is so perfect. It's not even funny. It would be and totally if perfect. And as an FBI agent, that's funny. <laughs> oh, my God. He's played an FBI agent in another movie with uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. I can't remember the name of the movie, but he's played an FBI agent before. It's Stakeout. That was the name of the movie. Stakeout. That is that is probably the be- you know, people have always kind of fantasy like, you know, produced this movie and actors. But that is probably the best four <laughs> I, I've ever seen. man. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. And like I said, when you're ready to make the movie, when you're ready to produce, when you're ready to green light my movie, this is my movie. This is well, be the I, best. I always, said, I, I always said, you know, God willing, or not even God willing, if it happens, yeah. great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But if there was to be a movie, I would love to pitch myself to be able to play an opponent of the Trashers. Oh, of course. And talk shit to AJ Galante. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, there, there's no doubt. Listen, I'll tell you what. You green light my movie, I'll give you a nice little cameo, okay? <laughs> you let you know, let me know. You let I want me my know. I want my screen actors guild card. So <laughs> and then I listen, for, for 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 you know, look, like I said, <laughs> this movie will be the most talked about comedy and <laughs> and all of you, you we will blow a slap shot out of the water oh, uh, i agree every 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 hockey movie every sports movie like uh major league will have nothing on this movie uh, we'll make My sports God. we'll make sports film history with this movie and like i hey, said you when you're ready <laughs> when you're ready just let me know i talked i talked to dad got the green light <laughs> well green light this movie i'll talk to all i'm in hollywood remember i'm in hollywood that is true i did i'm, I'm thinking that now i so got boots on the ground i got boots you, on the ground you may be onto something i think you may you, you may be onto it <laughs> <laughs> all right brother once again thank you so much for joining no. today dude. this was this was so much fun i knew it was going to be a great conversation we covered we covered a lot like i said your journey has been a wild one or as you like to say <laughs> it's been nuts uh, <laughs> it's been nuts definitely been nuts and like i said i'm just so happy to make your acquaintance and 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 you know become friends with you and collaborate with you and i'm i'm looking forward to continuing to track your career uh be along uh for the ride and help you in any which way that i can um uh you know obviously produce the movie uh <laughs> <laughs> so uh once again thank you for joining is there anything you want to tell people that they could check you out where they could find you uh ice wars what do you want to tell them i uh, just thank you to you man like i said i feel the same way i i we clicked instantly um get your trashers big league pillow and yeah. uh yeah man nah I, Listen, Twitter, Instagram at DB Trashers. I don't have a personal one, so that's okay. uh, I, I literally will answer any DM. So hit me up. I, I post it with everyone. Awesome, <laughs> and be sure to check out Ice Wars. What yes. Was it May? May twenty first. May twenty first, and, and that's the other thing on Instagram or Twitter. It's at Ice is War. Ice is War on Instagram. Look yeah. out for that on Fight TV. Uh, yep. we'll all be tuning in if if I can make it work with my schedule I'll I'll try to I'll try to come yeah, down. Yeah, make it do it. Let me know, man. You That'd you be won't fun. regret it. That would be a lot of fun. Well, once again, AJ, thank you so much for joining. Guys, thank you as always for joining us on the Double Down podcast. Uh give us a like, throw us a comment, a subscribe, whatever you can do to support the the podcast. It keeps us going. Thank you for all the amazing feedback we've been getting lately. Until next time. Peace. Yeah.